Welcome, family, to another edition of Stranger Thinking Media. This is Yeshayahu, where we address the problems of a modern world. So stay tuned. We have an awesome show for you today. Today we're going to tackle the angelic pantheon, the God species. How angels became gods, the God species. Let's kick back. You might learn something. Today's topics... How angels became worshipped as gods, the living creatures, the created messenger gods, the pantheon family. Welcome to our channel. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And most of all, enjoy the show. Psalms chapter 22 verse 6. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised of the people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head saying, he trusted on the Yahweh that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. How angels became worshipped as gods. So I have a little video hey, folks, for you. folks ever wondered how angels from ancient texts became worshipped as gods by men? Let's dive deep into the fascinating world of the Book of Enoch, the Book of Jubilees, and the Bible. First off, the Book of Enoch. This ancient Hebrew text introduces us to the Watchers, a group of rebellious angels who descended to Earth. They taught humans forbidden knowledge and were later cast into a dark abyss. But here's the kicker. Their knowledge made such an impact that some societies began to revere them as powerful deities. Moving on to the Book of Jubilees, we see a similar trend. This text elaborates on the fall of the Watchers and the birth of their giant offspring, the Nephilim. These beings were seen as demigods due to their enormous strength and abilities. Over time, stories of their might transformed them from fallen angels into objects of worship. Now let's talk about the Bible. In the Old Testament, angels are often messengers and warriors of God. But in some cultures, their awe-inspiring appearances and miraculous deeds led to them being venerated as gods themselves. Take Michael and Gabriel, for instance. Their roles in divine battles and human affairs made them legendary figures worthy of adoration. So how did this transformation happen? It's all about perception and influence. When these celestial beings interacted with humans, their extraordinary knowledge and powers left a lasting impression. Societies craving explanations for the mysteries of life and the cosmos elevated these angels to godlike status. In essence, what started as divine messengers and rebellious watchers in ancient texts evolved into revered gods through human interpretation and storytelling. It's a testament to how powerful narratives can shape beliefs and cultures. Isn't it fascinating how ancient texts and human imagination can intertwine to create such profound shifts in worship and reverence? Drop your thoughts in the comments and let's keep this discussion going. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more intriguing insights. Catch you next time. So as we can see, the angels started being worshipped as gods by men. Um, they are called Elohim, which King James translates as gods. So you look at the Greeks and the Romans, and you see their pantheon of gods. Well, what is that pantheon of gods? It's the angels. Psalms 22, verse 9. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. The living creatures, the created gods, or created Elohim. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 5. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man, and everyone had four faces, and everyone had four wings, and their feet were straight feet. And the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. Well, that word there should be bronze. They were in the Bronze Age when they wrote this. And there's a reason I bring that up, <laughs> and we'll talk about it in another video. It's kind of important still. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 12. And they went, everyone straight forward, whither the Spirit was to go, they went. And they turned not when they went. 
As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire, and like the appearance of a lamp. It went up and down among the living creatures, and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning, and the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning, so that they could travel at the speed of light. And we know that nothing with mass can travel at the speed of light. These are massless things, and yet they can become mass. They can change themselves into matter. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 19. And when the living creatures went, the wheels went by them. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up also. Whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went. Thither was their spirit to go, and the wheels were lifted up over against them. For the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. Now that's describing some very otherworldly thing. And that's what Elohim kind of denotes, something, a being greater than man, above man. And so these living creatures are created Elohim. Now, Elohim is the word used for God, except the creators of heaven and earth are called the Yahweh Elohim, the eternal mighty ones, as opposed to the created mighty ones. Psalms 22 Verse 12, many bulls have compassed me, strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. The created messenger gods, angel Elohim. Now, the word angel simply means messenger. It's a job description. Psalms 104 and uh, verse 1, bless the Lord, O my soul, O my God. Thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Who covers thyself with light as with a garment? Who stretches out the heavens like a curtain? Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters? Whom maketh the clouds his chariots, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, he's the cloud rider, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flaming fire. Wow. That's, that's pretty deep. Um, I'm having trouble reading this with the flames in the background, so bear with me a little bit. Here's my favorite, Psalms 82. I have said, ye are gods, ye are Elohim, and all of you are the children of the Most High, but ye shall die like men. Ye shall be like men. Ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. So yes, angels can be destroyed. Stop thinking. I saw a video. I said, oh, why can't God destroy Satan? Or well, here's why God can't destroy Satan. Well, that's craziness. Psalms 78. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them. Here they're referring to the Egyptians and that uh, they were, uh, Father Yahweh unleashed evil angels and slew them, their firstborn, and brought about the 10 plagues. Exodus chapter 12, verse 12, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am Yahweh. What he said there is, I am that I am. <laughs> so I don't think we're picking up on that. He slew the gods of Egypt. Right? These are Elohim. The gods of Egypt are real. They're fallen angels that gave power to this nation. We call Mitzrayim or Egypt. Judges chapter 2, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of Yahweh and served Balaam. And they forsook Yahweh Elohim of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Mitzrayim, and followed other gods, other Elohim, 
of the Elohim of the people that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked Yahweh to anger. And they forsook Yahweh and served the Lord and Easter. Baal means Lord. Ashtaroth is another name for Easter. Ishtar. Now the queen of heaven. So I say all that to give you an idea of how fallen angels, they want to be like the Most High. They're not trying to replace Father Yahweh. It's impossible. They know that. Only you don't know that. <laughs> so they just want to be worshipped. They want to be like the Most High. Psalms 22, verse 15. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws, and thou hast brought me unto the dust of death. For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. The Pantheon family. So we're going to talk about how, how this all came about. How did these angels decide they wanted to be gods, worshipped as gods? Genesis chapter 6, verse 1, And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them as wives, all of which they chose. Wow, that's deep. So, no doubt here, these angels, these fallen Elohim, the watchers in this case, fell in love with human women. They wanted to start families because humans can have families, angels can't. So they take on the form of men and beget children through human women. Genesis chapter 6, verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. Now that word renown should be translated Hashem, men of the name, except men of the name, not the name of Father Yahuwah. They've discarded that and buried it so that you don't even know his name. They came in their own name. They wanted to make a name for themselves. Genesis chapter 6, verse 23. And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fowl of heaven. And they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. So right there, it tells you that nothing survived that. I mean, I, I hear people try to rationalize it. Well, it was only this certain portion of the earth that was flooded. Eh, I don't know about that. But nothing remained alive. That includes Nephilim. In fact, the flood was there to destroy the Nephilim. Not men so much, because men, men are God, God's creation. Anyway, Jubilees, chapter 10, verse 4. But do thou bless me and my sons, that we may increase and multiply and replenish the earth, and thou knowest how thy watchers, the fathers of these spirits, acted in my day. And as for these spirits which are living, imprison them and hold them fast in the place of condemnation. And let them not bring destruction upon the sons of thy servant, my God. For these are malignant and created in order to destroy. Noah is begging Father Yah, please get rid of these disembodied Nephilim. They're just as dangerous in the spirit form as they were in physical form. Jubilees chapter 10, verse 49, and he said, Let the tenth part of them remain before him, and let nine parts descend into the place of condemnation. So what Father Yah did for mankind was put 90% of these disembodied Nephilim, we call them demons, into the abyss with their fathers so that we'd only have to deal with 10% of them. And that 10% is enough to wreak havoc. And he does this to give us something to work against, to build character, to build strength, to prepare us for the mighty gift that he's going to give us so that we might discover the incredible human potential. Yeah, there's a potential here that you guys don't know about. You are more powerful than you might imagine. So we're going to um, 
not so much close it out, but uh, I just want you to think about it. You were created for a reason, and it's not some weird, unknowable reason. Job chapter 1, verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God, the angels, the living creatures, the living Elohim, the created Elohim, they came to present themselves before Yahweh. And Ashitan came also amongst them. Ashitan, Satan, simply means adversary. It just means adversary or adversaries. And they are the accusers of mankind. And Yahweh said unto Ashitan, Whence comest thou? And Ashitan answered Yahweh and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Yes, he's alive and well. Crawling on his belly, bound to the earth. That's what that means, to crawl on his belly. He's bound to the earth. Wow. Well, on that note, I'm going to say farewell, family. I love you all so much. and Thank you so much for continually supporting my content. If you did enjoy this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and share this with your friends and family. I'm sure they'd find it interesting as well. I'm very excited to continue this journey with you, and I thank you all for bringing certain stories to my attention and for continually keeping me updated with certain events around the world. I very much appreciate you all, and shout out to the channel members. Thank you so much for subscribing. I appreciate you all very much. And may everybody have a beautiful and blessed day. Who's in the body of Messiah, Yahusha, HaMashiach. And I'll see you on the next video. And to that I'll say, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom.